Two large parallel metal plates are oriented horizontally and separated by a distance 3D. A grounded conducting wire joins them. Initially, each plate carries one charge. Now, a third identical plate carrying charge Q is inserted between the two plates parallel to them and located a distance D from the upper plate, as in figure H2657. A. What induced charge appears on each of the two original plates? B. What potential difference appears between the middle plate and each of the other plates? Each plate has an area of A. Two plates, originally ungrounded, uh, originally uncharged. They are attached by a wire that is grounded. Now, you'll notice if you look in the, the book itself, we should have at this point added the grounding symbol. Some of your books have it by default, some don't. So that grounding wire should have been added. So we have the symbol for the ground, which is this. The question is, after we add a plate at a particular distance uh, from each of the two plates, what is the charge on each one of the plates and what is the electric potential difference between each one of the plates and the center plate here? So when I talk about the electric potential difference one, I'm talking about the electric potential difference between these two, and when I'm talking about the electric potential for two, that's between two and the middle plate. Tell me what we know. What happens? when we bring this charged plate with a charge of positive Q between the two plates. Eric? So they get polarized or no? What would what get polarized? The plate one and two. Plate one and two initially are uncharged, right? So, but this is different than what you would normally consider because it's grounded. So what does grounding those two those two plates do? Okay, it can gain or lose electrons. So what happens to the top and bottom plates, Sierra? Will the positive plate induce a charge on one? The positive plate will cause negative charges from the ground to flow into the top and bottom plates. What will be the total charge then on the top and bottom plates. Negative Q. So we know right now that the charge total on the two plates, charge one plus charge two, is equal to negative Q because we will have an equal amount of charge to neutralize this positively charged plate come from the ground. Good. That's what we know about the total charge. What else? What about the electric potential difference? Okay, what about the electric potential difference between one and two, plates one and two? All the way from plate one to plate two. is the electric potential difference between one and two is zero. When we add that wire, remember, on this, it becomes an equipotential surface. By adding that wire, these two plates are going to be at the same potential. So the electric potential difference then for between plate one, what do we know about the electric potential difference then between plate one and our middle plate and between plate two and our middle plate. Jenkins. Electric potential for one plus electric potential for two equals zero. Well, actually, they're going to be the same because the, the electric potential difference simply between the two are going to be the same. We're just talking about the magnitudes of it. So the electric potential difference between one and two are going to be the same. The definition of capacitance, Yu Chen. Um. 
shit, this is a, this is like a, one of the most basic things from last time. And you don't have to have it memorized. You have all sorts of resources, all at, on the desk in front of you, including MoMed, evidently. <laughs> The amount of charge over the electric potential difference on the capacitor. So we can rearrange this to get the electric potential difference is equal to the charge divided by the capacitance. So we have the electric potential difference across one is equal to the electric potential difference across two, or the charge on one divided by the capacitance of one is equal to the charge on two divided by the capacitance on two. What type of capacitors are these? Miller. Parallel plate. Parallel plate capacitors. We have an equation for parallel plate capacitors. Catherine, what is it? The capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is? Um, uh, like the charge density. Times K. Times K. What's K? Um, good. It's not the spring constant. <laughs> um. K, Vlad is called. Proportionality constant. It's also not the proportionality constant. Always a fun game. That. The dielectric constant. This is not the equation for the capacitance for a parallel plate capacitor. It's close. Sorry, Jane Jones. Is it E0 instead of uh, It is E0, not, not the surface charge density, but the permittivity of free space. So we have the capacitance of the capacitor. So we can now take and substitute that in to our equation. We have Q1 over the capacitance of the first one. Well, actually, uh, we know the dielectric constant in this particular case is, Tyler? Um, That would be Boltzmann's constant. What is the dielectric constant in this case? It's pretty much one. It's pretty much one. We consider it to be one. It's not quite. Uh, but in this particular case, because it is air, we consider the dielectric constant to be one. So E naught A over D. So we have Q1. Uh, let's multiply by the reciprocal. It's much more fun that way. Uh, times D1 divided by E naught times A is equal to Q2 divided by, or multiplied by the reciprocal, again, more fun, uh, times D2 over E naught times A. about D1 versus D2, do we not? We actually have <coughs> equations for them. D1 is just D, and D2 is just 2D. Everyone brought D to the party. relationship between Q1 and Q2, we know something about the total charge. We have that over here. So we can now combine the two. We have Q1 is equal to 2 times Q2. We also have that Q1 plus Q2 is equal to negative Q. Therefore, 2 times Q2 plus Q2 is equal to negative Q, or 3Q2 is equal to negative Q, or Q2 is equal to negative Q over 3. We can therefore also say that because Q1 plus Q2 equals negative Q, we have Q1 plus negative Q over 3 is equal to negative Q. Therefore, Q1 is equal to 2Q over 3 negative. 
Right. So, when we were talking about like q1 plus q2 equals negative q, how come that doesn't depend on distance? How come the charges don't depend on distance? Charges don't depend on distance. Because the, it's the, um, because they are going to have the a same, well, the charges don't depend on distance. The charges do end up depending on distance away from it. It's just that the total charge adds up to negative q. Right? The farther away from it is, changes the amount of charge on it. Right? The farther away, it's going to have slightly less charge. Um, yes? I don't understand how like we have negative q for the top and bottom plate. Sure. Why is it that we have a negative charge on the top and bottom plate? Zach? It actually doesn't have to do with a small positive test charge in this particular case. Which we're not talking about the electric field in this case. Miller? Because the charge on the middle plate is positive Q, so it's neutralized that F to zero. It tries to find equilibrium. In this particular case, what that means is that it tries to make the net charge equal to zero. Originally, without this place here, plate here, it was neutral. Right? By bringing this positive plate in between the two with a charge positive Q, then from the earth, from ground, it uh, attracts, according to the law of charges, negative charges. Right? And the total negative charge then is going to be equal to negative Q so that the total charge is equal to zero. Right. We have figured out part A, the charge on each part B, Q1 and Q2. We've already shown that Q1, or sorry, the electric potential difference across one and the electric potential difference across two are the same. So we just need to find the electric potential difference. We have an equation for it. It's Q over C. So the electric potential difference for one is equal to the charge divided by the capacitance for each one. So we have the charge on one. It's equal to negative two Q over three divided by the capacitance of one. And we know the capacitance is equal to um, E naught A over D. So this is E naught times A divided by D1 was just D. So this electric potential difference across one is equal to negative uh, 2 d q over 3 e naught a. And if you go through and do it with the other one, you'll get the exact same answer. 